Okay, now moving on to the next panel, uh, Indie and Alternative. And uh, uh, please welcome uh, Munekatsu Ota-san. Uh, please, uh, uh, Ota-san online. Hopefully I'll meet him online. Uh, he's a representative director of Rakuten Life Will Stay. And, uh, and having uh, Atsuo Mori-san, uh, the territory manager of Airbnb Japan on stage. And I'm co-moderating uh, co with Kei Shibata. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ota-san, for participating online from Singapore. And Mori-san, please have a seat. Nice meet you. <laughs> Oh, nice great. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting Hi, Otosa. Thank you. Okay. Um, now let's talk about other type of hospitality um, and the market uh, growth of alternative accommodation was a uh, direct proportion to the growth of inbound travel coming into Japan. And uh, um, it was an alternative accommodation for new type of customer. And it was an alternative inventory for the hospitality market capture our uh, uh, new demand. And the uh, border has been closed for these uh, two years. And uh, you know, it's same thing to the, the hospitality hotel industry, but the, uh, the big blow to this alternative accommodation as well. And um, I have to say that I visited Kyoto about 10 times during these past two years. 10 times, Ten times. yeah every other month or so and um, you know i had some uh, um, engagement there but um every time i visited <laughs> okay uh, every time i visited <laughs> it's echoing <laughs> i found the signage and also a noren which um, you know shows that um it's a curtain that uh, it's for the minpaku alternative accommodation has been disappearing one after another um, but um, I believe the market um, attention to this alternative accommodation platform was always in the spotlight. So um, I'd like to start from uh, Airbnb Morisan um, that um, it is still uh, very new to our memory that uh, your CEO, Brian Chesky, has uh, sent out a letter announcing uh, his restructuring of the company. Uh, to uh, employees, and um, um, it probably it must have been very tough to let the quarter of the team go. Um, I actually happened to visit uh, your headquarter back in February last uh, two years, 2020. The building was looks very um, empty um, at that time, but you still have met your IPO target, and uh, in fact, it, it recorded the largest IPO uh in 2020 the market value is 120 billion now and uh, it is uh, way over the uh, uh other ipo of the market market value of the market um i'd like to ask you what was your journey during these two years and as a company and also as uh, airbnb japan specifically um thank you very much and uh pleased to be here uh, thank you for uh, thank you. everybody here so actually it uh, used to be uh the for me it's a real event since two years back. So <laughs> this is quite an uh, honorable experience here yeah. to be here. So uh, yes, uh, the two questions, last two years are quite tough uh, and the severe period for the Airbnb as a whole and Japan too. Uh, for a global, um, we have to say that in May 2020, uh, no, March 2020, uh, we lost, uh, I say 80% of the business uh, within a few weeks. And uh, people even wonder that, uh, you know, Airbnb would even exist after that. Mm. Um, that's actually happened and it's on the um, various media. Mm. And uh, we had to see the, as you said, uh, we had to see the uh, quarter of our air farm, the members, to leave the company. Mm. Uh, it was quite tough experience for us all. And uh, we had the pandemic actually forced us to focus on what we are and uh, what makes Airbnb unique. Uh, special and different, which is uh, uh, host and hosting in the communities. So we direct, uh, drastically changed our directions. We um, basically uh, focused our entire resources, uh, people and power and attention to the what we are, uh, which is community. And then um, we changed the product uh, quite adaptable to the need of uh, host and hostings. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, we know that uh, people want to travel, and uh, especially on the Airbnb, and they love Airbnb as a platform. And uh, in the summer, actually, after a few months, after the you know we made the drastic decisions, we see the um, recovery of our business actually. And then uh, we decide to dust off S1, meaning that uh, we run is the IPO. Actually, that uh, um, it was a you know my to me first IPO through the entirely Zoom. <laughs> so <laughs> it was a great experience. Uh, so, of course, it's uh, you know San Francisco's teams do that, but uh, when I see the news, it's already virtual so, IPO. So <laughs> it's quite an experience. So the, we continued investing in the product, and we upgraded into that product with 150 uh, new functions, which is for the host and hostings. And then we uh, made a quite recovery for now. So it was a quite experience as a global and for Japan as well, because we heavily depended on the inbound business before the COVID, uh, before the pandemic. And then we direct, we shift the our focus to the inbound, uh, not the domestic demand. So the also the we see the way where people living and travel are so changing. So we see the changing. Uh, we see the like say like a more and more, more spontaneous nearby stays, long term stays, vacations, and other need to stay at the uh, you know outside of the cities. Yeah. So the with, to meet those demand, those needs, like emerging uh, voice of the uh, guest, we shift the drastically. So it's quite. Mm. Put a long story short, quite dramatic and busy mm. <laughs> two years. So I see. Okay, thank you. Now, Ota-san online, um, I'd like to ask, uh, the Minpaku has always uh, uh, been uh, a solution to a long-term uh, issue of uh, vacant houses all over Japan. And uh, your company was born out of the strategic partnership between uh, Lakuten and the LIFO, the life, you know, the real estate platform. Now, um, your product vacation stay has accumulated inventory over 60,000 uh, today and including its own, your uh, Rakuten Villa. Um, is, is that correct? I, am I, am I uh, saying right? Okay, um, I would like to ask the same question. What was your journey during these two, uh, past two years? Is there any tweak in your strategy uh, because of this pandemic? Okay, so can you hear me? Yep. Hmm. Okay, okay. So in one word, so honestly speaking, so the two years is a very, very strict year for us. Then, uh, but fortunately, uh, we uh, vacation stay uh, achieved over 80,000 so inventory at the end of last year. Okay. And then we have been so uh, growing at uh, GMS, uh, gross transaction value, approximately, so a double growth compared with 2019. Uh, it's a very, very so good situation, but a very, very tough situation. Then, in terms of middle and long term aspect, we uh, enhance to uh, increase our uh, inventory volume as much as possible to provide a uh, various uh, so accommodation style to our users. Then, at the same time, during the pandemic, we are uh, enhancing the property management business under the Lactin brand. We call it Lactin Stay. Lactin stays, so Lactin, we Lactin supervise everything. So, uh, so to select the land and then property type, and then uh, we operate everything in, on behalf of property owners. And it's like a, so a, a chain brand, and then we enhance, enhancing the Lactin stay business and in the pandemic, and then we can so grow up uh, uh, this kind of business. Then, of course, so uh, booking so uh, business is a quite tough situation, but uh, in the pandemic situation, we uh, uh, focus on so uh, increasing uh, so uh, inventory so volume and to provide a various so uh, property type. But at the same time, we are enhancing uh, so uh, property management business. Then we uh, now Lactin stay businesses are expanding so uh, rapidly. And approximately within three years, uh, we already opened thirty five so properties and the four hundred fifty so uh, inventories. Then from now, so uh, so far, so this. This, this business is very, very good condition, even in pandemic condition. The occupancy rate is very, very high. Then I believe that so this kind of business has a huge potential. And then we will enhance uh, not only so a booking so a platform, but uh, so property management business. And then so uh, we found there's a huge potential in the pandemic situation. And then we are uh, able to grow up small more. Thank you very much. Mm. Okay. 
Let me ask uh, our question to uh, um, both uh, um, Oto-san and Mori-san. So um, since uh, I wear a different hat other than Travel JP business in Japan, so uh, we have a, a global business under the name uh, Trip101 in Singapore. And the, we've been working with the uh, Airbnb and then as well as the uh, our, our Rakuten Life Will Stay. And then for us uh, as a Trip 101, it's been a very interesting journey for the last two years. Mm -hmm. And especially over the course of the last uh, probably 12 to 18 months, the growth of uh, 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 the bookings of the uh, private accommodations through our website has been growing massively. Mm -hmm especially in the market like North America and the uh, perhaps uh, UK included. I think uh, those market has been sh showing a very strong performance such as like 80% of a uh, GMV growth uh, year on year. Mm. So uh, we were very lucky and then we are very, very happy to see that. But uh, I just wonder like, you know, what, what, what is a, do you see the same kind of trend, like this kind of a strong, strong growth? In the alternative accommodation space uh, uh, on your platform in Japan, so um, can you uh, can you give me some sense of it? So like uh, like how how much of the growth is actually you are seeing? Maybe more recent stuff with. Sure, uh, thank you very much, and uh, I hope that I can comment on the super detail of Japan yeah. trends, but I can do that. But uh, globally, yes, um, there's a two data point actually. The one is that uh, we did a survey, actually, over the 7,500 uh, the consumer surveys. And uh, we see that the 30 percent, actually more than 30 percent of the um, those surveys uh, say that the, they want to stay in longer term stays more and more uh, during the even after the pandemics uh, to enjoy the locals and to enjoy the new life because that they got remote work and all the lifestyle changes. Right. And uh, the second data point is that kind of actual business data. So from 2020s, uh, the during that autumn period, so three to four months, uh, we see the um, like more than 30% of the nights booked on Airbnb is longer term stays, meaning that uh, over uh, over one month. Yeah, over 28, 28 nights, right? That's the, yeah, that's, exactly. that's the standard yeah. you're saying. So, yeah. okay. so uh, yes, we see from the data point with a trend and uh, if I add the one more interesting part is that the, the ratio of a longer term stay on the Airbnb of the global uh, is from that age, rate, age uh, range of uh, like senior level. So 60, over 60 uh, aged people who stay longer term on Airbnb of the more than any other age range. So oh. it's kind of surprising and uh, interesting oh. trend, I see. Are you seeing the same similar trend in Japan, like uh, when when it comes to like a long long stays, long term stays? So I can say the uh, percentage, <laughs> but uh, no, yes, you don't have yeah. to. But uh, yeah, we see that uh, quite um, big number up, in, especially around big cities. Mm -hmm. Say because you can imagine that uh, people staying that say around Tokyo, like Kariza or Nasu right, or right. Chiba areas, the people staying that over there is for uh, longer term stays is getting one more. So, okay. yeah, that's okay. a big trend, I think. Good. Oh, so, Ota san, so I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the two things. One is actually the growth, right? The growth rate. So, so I've, be, I've seen like 80% or whatever the growth in, in our platform, which is actually tremendous. At the same time, so we've also seen the uh, a trend of a, a long term long time stay. Like people staying over like uh, three weeks and four weeks or so, that that number has also shot up. Like uh, in our platform, I think twenty percent of uh, uh, all the bookings is over twenty eight nights. So um, you don't have to say the numbers, but the, are you seeing are you seeing the, like a similar trends? Like uh, you know, really high growth and then also the uh, really high number of the uh, uh, long time stays in in your platform in Japan. Yeah, uh, as far as book vacation stays and so honestly speaking, so uh, almost same as before at this moment uh, in terms of the length of stay aspect. But uh, four week over four weeks so, uh, stay is uh, increasing so gradually. Okay. But uh, average, total average so length of stay is almost same as before. Okay. 
But the uh, booking uh, property type is a little bit different from uh, uh, nowadays. And then before COVID-19, so apartment type is a majority, mm -hmm. but now for uh, private house type is a uh, majority, almost so uh, 60%. It's uh, it a little bit different from the so property type, but the uh, length of stay is almost the same before COVID-19. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so the it's in, it's interesting. Like yesterday at the at the local OTA panel, <laughs> every one of them is actually uh, not uh, super optimistic about, about the uh, private accommodation. Yeah. They're saying like, oh, Min Park private accommodation probably not get there in Japan, including Rakuten, including yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Including okay. Takao-san, right? So that, yeah. that's, a, that's interesting. Okay, so uh, uh, one more question from me. So uh, to, to both of you, right? So um, um, and the uh, um, so what's the one unique uh, characteristic in the Japanese alternative accommodation market that you identify over the course of the last two years during the pandemic comparing to the global market? Is there anything interesting you notice? Sorry, me. Go ahead. So um, it's a bit difficult to say, but uh, probably this may be the why I'm Japanese. But the I say people, people in the Japan that's quite unique because that it's quite um, surprising to see the um, the all the regions are so different. Food are different, the culture are different, and the language is a bit different, and um, people are also different. And uh, through the private accommodations, um, you probably you know that you maybe need to um, communicate with the host, the people around it, to know the local, the food or everything, because it's not in the center of a city. So, but through that you can enjoy the interaction of people. And uh, my sense that uh, um, especially the Airbnb, we see that uh, human connection is in more need. So the people are the one which makes the Japan, Japanese uh, accommodations kind of unique. And uh, I think private lodgings, um, you can enjoy more and more. So, so. more human interactions yeah. uh, between the host and the, uh, uh, and the guest. Okay. Uh, Oto-san, so the, uh, um, I have a different set of, different question for you. So um, I think uh, last week, the Brian Chesky of Airbnb mm -hmm. asked on a Twitter and mm -hmm if airbnb could could launch anything in 2022 what would it be that's a, that was a question by the uh, brian chesky to the to the people on the twitter and then their top six you know answers were the crypto payments are uh, a clear pricing dis displays guest loyalty programs updated the cleaning fees uh, more long-term stays and discounts, mm -hmm. and the better mm -hmm. customer service. Okay, mm -hmm. so among mm -hmm. those six suggestions, which one do you want to you know make it happen on your platform, mm -hmm. or maybe something else? Uh, to a vacation stay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, I see. I choose a better customer services. Mm -hmm. Of course, better, better customer, customer service. service. And then because uh, like in life stays, so from the first, we are thinking about how to improve, uh, provide the best of our customer services. Mm -hmm. And then this is a top priority for me. And then, uh, then actually, so this year, I have several plans to provide uh, better services to improve our vacation stays, so user experiences. And at this moment, I can say in detail, but uh, always think about how to provide, how to improve so uh, customer services. I think this is a top priority for me. Okay, okay. A very quick question to the Morrison then. So, uh, um, and so if you are starting up your own business, new business in the private accommodation space, what would be the idea? Um, I'd say there are huge opportunities around the okay. private business. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, because it, as you can imagine that uh, it requires a uh, cleaning, so uh, messaging, uh -huh. uh, furniture, some things. But uh, I'd say uh, there's a uh, one quite big missing piece of that is somebody who like connect the dots, mm. the connect the services. So as uh, what as I mentioned, the probably EP uh, like uh, management services providers, because but uh, I think that uh, it's it's not enough. Mm. 
uh, across Japan. Maybe Tokyo, Osaka, there are many, okay. but uh, not in the region where, where people can enjoy the interaction with people. But it's quite difficult to go there, enjoy the terms, because there's no transportation. It's, it's, mm. it's a new way to enjoy the region. So if somebody can uh, connect the dots, there is a service actually, but it's not connected. Okay. So that would be the areas I, I believe that there's a chance. And uh, um, I think if I were somebody to do that, <laughs> that'd be the chance, I think. Maybe maybe in the near future. Yeah. So let's see. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I'd like to, um, the time is actually uh, running up again. Um, move on to um, some questions about the lifestyle change that's going on in, uh, uh, during the you know, no, new normal. Uh, after COVID or uh, with COVID. You know, this two base or uh, dual multi base lifestyle is going or being a uh, uh, trend in these days. And uh, well, I think, you know, uh, uh, Otasan is also dual, dual lifestyle, maybe with Singapore and Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm with uh, uh, Tokyo and Karizawa. K is multiple, I think. <laughs> and then. <Sorry>. Um, <laughs> I heard that the host of those uh, minpaku actually um, during this COVID time has uh, pulled out out of the market and rent out uh, the asset to these type of a dual lifestylers. And uh, also heard that those who are planning to move on to this uh, new lifestyle, dual lifestyle, used minpaku as a good substitute or interim uh, way of uh, stay and uh, or tryout, whatever. Uh, do you see this trend in your host or customers both side um yes it's actually uh, even the, before the pandemic it's it happened it was and uh, i think that it's happening more because that uh, people are seeking for more opportunities through their assets mm. as a host especially so there's a say uh, one example is announced by say uh the tokyo mm. uh they opened at the um the rent brand it's a uh, it's kind of rental and home sharing like mm. a dual model so people who stay there as a renter they can rent out as accommodations mm. and then they are the tokyo's and their partners support the operations so that the kind of a thing is actually happening before even before the pandemic but it's more and more mm. because of the people are wondering what is the best way to utilize the asset mm. and then the more people who start doing that i believe that the more guests will come to that uh, um, area to stay so yes it's happening and uh um one of the also another trend is that uh, we see the increasing number of uh, the cottage and villas mm. around tokyo especially uh which bought by uh, some of the hosts and then they stay there and while they're not there they rent out on the airbnb um and uh we see that uh, quite uh, quite a few like renovated mm. villas and cottages coming up so Yes, I think that it's a trend and okay. uh, it's more and more coming uh, given the changing lifestyle. Right, right. How about, um, how about you, Ota-san, uh, in life, uh, Rakuten's stay? Yes, so uh, as I mentioned uh, before, then nowadays, or so my majority property type is, uh, looking, looking majority property type, it's a uh, uh, private house type. And then Nowadays, so uh, 30 or 40 years old and then family uses, they are willing to use as private house type to avoid the COVID-19 disease. And then I think this is a huge, so a uh, very, very good uh, movement for vacation rental business. And then many, so uh, travelers willing to use a uh, stay in a uh, private house type to avoid the COVID-19 list. Then, so this is, for example, so some of uh, property owners are uh, easy to join uh, vacation rental so market and uh, to, they, they don't use us over there, so a cottage or something. I think this is, a, I, I feel a huge potential for vacation rental market, so uh, because of a COVID-19 impact. Then, yeah, so uh, many people, before COVID-19, so many people, their choice is only to stay in a hotel and ryokan, but nowadays, uh, vacation rental style is uh, very familiar uh, because of COVID-19. And then, yeah, I think this trend is uh, warming up uh, uh, post COVID 19. Hmm. Okay. Shall we go Great. with the rapid fire? Maybe? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So, uh, rapid fire question. So, I'll say two things, <laughs> and you pick the one thing out of two. Okay. So, mm -hmm. first, uh, uh, Okinawa or Hawaii? Mm -hmm. Okinawa. Okinawa. <laughs> uh, Hawaii. 
Hawaii. Hawaii. Okay. Yes. Take a <laughs> take a train or take a flight. Oh, now maybe train. <laughs> train. What a train, train. Train. Okay. <laughs> So the four weeks of working from vacation home, or one week of work, uh, one week of uh, working from vacation home times four trips. Um, interesting. Uh, yeah, one week from uh, vacation. One four, week four, times yeah. four. Okay. Yeah, same. 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 Okay. Uh, blockchain or metaverse? Oh, metaverse. Metaverse. Blockchain. Blockchain. Yes. Yeah. Tokyo governor or Osaka governor? <laughs> uh, no comment. Tokyo governor. <laughs> Tokyo? <laughs> okay, the last one is actually a, a book in destination activity in the last minute or book them in advance? Um, in advance. Yeah, in, in advance. advance. Yeah. In advance. Okay, so with this, okay, with this, uh, we I think we covered um, our indie and alternative accommodation session, and I would like to thank you, uh, Ota-san, for uh, joining online, and thank you, Mori-san, for being on on site. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you.